Or since my grandpa passed, people will bring me like things from my grandpa all the time, which is like sweet. so sweet. Like what? Um, somebody just the, this weekend in Oxnard, somebody brought like uh, it's a keychain, but it's not like just a keychain. It, it's like very well done. Like they printed out like a really cute picture. It's like it's designed really classy like wow. now it's all my car keys and everything wow. um shirts somebody made a build my grandpa was in the navy so somebody made a build a bear in a navy outfit and they'd have like a steve name oh, tag and everything God, dude. really cute stuff like, people will write me notes just saying like you know thank you and i'm sorry for your loss and all that kind of stuff like people are, they're very kind it did hit you hard yeah i know yeah. you were like best but i mean that was your guy yeah it's, it's it still doesn't he's really the first person in my family to like die in my lifetime like my, my dad died when i was one right but like that had no effect on me i, I have no memory of it or yeah. anything like i wasn't i was one no there was wasn't present for me yeah um but for my grandpa he's somebody i would talk to literally every single day and it still doesn't feel real like this is the first thing of death i've really ever had to deal with at least with somebody close to me like my great grandparents passed away like six years ago but they were like 97 like that's their time yeah you know and you're, and you're and the connection's different right? yeah so it still feels like it just feels like what do you mean i can't call him like it feels like i'm not allowed versus like it's not an option does yeah. that make any sense 1000 percent. i don't know what stage i'm at in the grieving process I, have you been I, allowing yourself to i mean that's a question i get quite often because i because i am so like overwhelmingly busy now thank god and i still don't know if that's like a blessing or if I'm supposed to be taking that time to reflect. I I think he would be happy at how busy I am 1, right now. One thousand percent. And I still a lot of the times before I go on stage, I'll say like a, a little prayer because the 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 necklace that I, that I wear, I, I left this with him in his uh, hospice bed when he uh, last time I saw him, and so he like he passed away with it like in his hand. So I like I'll have this with me all the time. Wow, so dude. I'll, from time to time, I'll say a little prayer, just like you know, help you have a good show, Grandpa. And, yeah. You know, hope you enjoy it. Awesome. And you know what's funny? Since I've started doing that, I've I did six shows in Oxnard, and like not on purpose, but like I think I did a little prayer for like three of them, and those were the three best shows by far. So like little things like that, That's you're awesome. like, hmm, I wonder. And also, funny enough, today is the first day I've been in LA since he passed away that it has not been raining. This is the this might be the first day I've seen sunlight in LA Whoa. since he passed away. It was Whoa. so weird how I hadn't seen like a beautiful day since he passed away. So strange. He was um, pretty uh, involved in your just comedy. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think last time we, we spoke at great length about him. So last time I was here, actually, yeah. with you, uh, we talked about how I bought him a pocket pussy for Christmas. <laughs> yes. And you were like, and that was just like a story I was telling. And you were like, you have to tell that on stage. And now in the special, Matthew Stephen Reif, it's the opening bit. Like, it's, it's like one of the most prominent go. things. So thank you, thank you for for making me do that. I mean, bro, again, it and just... he loved it too. Like he was obsessed with that joke. It it embarrassed the shit out of him, but like he he low key loved it. That's big time. Absolutely. How did he kind of, um, I guess, shape? What do you think he would be saying right now with like the success you're going through? Like just enjoy it, or would he have kind of like little life things to kind of keep you on track? <sighs> I mean, he was never one for like great advice or yeah. anything. He was just very supportive. Yes. Like he was just. He was just my like biggest fan, I think. Like, Someone ever. to share your success with. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You need that. I was. He was the first person I wanted to call when everything when anything fun happened. And luckily, like some some great things have been moving recently. Like I've been having some fantastic meetings, and there's some great opportunities coming up that I'm, yeah. I'm very excited to announce Good. in the months coming. Oh hell yeah! But when they happened, like I remember that when the the, the big call came in. As soon as I hung up, I immediately went to like my my speed dial, like the the favorites or whatever, yeah. and I literally almost clicked on his name just out of like instinct, and I was like, "Fuck, I Oof. can't call and share this news with him. It really sucks." But I think he, I mean, he helped shape my my comedy from birth. Like it's because I didn't have a dad, like he was like my father figure. He, uh, I would spend every single weekend with him when I was a kid, and our thing was movies. Yeah, we would just. He didn't like have any like hobbies or interests or anything like that, yeah. really. So we would just lay on the couch together and watch movies all week. Every time I would go to his house, he would have like 10 new DVDs that he would go buy and we would watch them together. Huge. And most of them were comedies. Adam Sandler, David Spade, Jim Carrey, um, some raunchier stuff like Bad Santa was like, it's like Whoa. one of the earliest Christmas movies I have a memory Whoa. of. That's a great one to start off with. Oh, it's one of my favorite movies So he's ever. shaping your, com I mean, whether it's your point of view, your your taste though. Definitely my taste. It's so, uh, people don't realize that to get introduced to that stuff that early, mm -hmm. It's, it, like there's no way you weren't going to be involved in this business. Oh yeah. Or have like a 
that looks fun or at least just would you guys mm-hmm. like talk and quote movie like would you all the time like yeah. that was our thing is we would always like reenact our favorite like comedic movie scenes <laughs> together so ever ever since a young kid I was always reciting my favorite like comedy movie lines and stuff like that and he it's so it it feels corny even though it's like a full circle thing so like he has he had nicknames for all his grandkids so ever since I was like five mine was Hollywood because I was always quoting movie lines and stuff like that. Whoa. That was always my nickname. It was, his, it was my name in his phone. Like for years, that's what he would call me. Um, li- I mean, this was years before I ever thought about doing stand up or anything like that. That's crazy. So now that I live here and all this, and now that all the success is happening, it's kind of a, a beautiful. Yeah, circle. man, that's a good omen. And he was always like my biggest support. Like, he was always the person I knew I could make him like be in tears laughing, and that I think gave me such a confidence to be like, okay, maybe you are actually funny. And when I started out doing comedy at the, at the, at the Columbus Funny Bone when I was 15, it's a, it was still a bringer open mic. You still had to get five people to buy tickets to, to give you five minutes. God damn. And he would buy five tickets because all my friends were in middle school still. <laughs> so he would come and he would buy five tickets convincing the club that there was like five people there to see me just so I'm I could sorry, like do comedy for him. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Probably know out doing away. eighth grade, you know, yeah. fingering chicks on a bus. <laughs> and, hey, I can't stop them. That's their life. You know, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to go tell these eighth graders not to finger? I'm just a I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy with a microphone. <laughs> I don't have that kind of power, bro. That's incredible. That, yeah. that okay. Well, that is, I mean, dude. Without that is solely being heavily involved in Absolutely. the start of the journey. Yeah, bro. That's awesome. Thank you, man. And then I got it. Uh, I had his hand. I found an old photo when I had to go through his stuff after he passed away. Like things that I wanted to take with me. I found this old photo from when I was like. Like seven or eight in it, and on the back of it, he had like the year, and he wrote Hollywood on the back of it. So I, I found the photo with his uh, his handwriting, and I got it tattooed. Like, wow, every dude! Passed away. Oh, I'm not gonna cry. Don't do it, Don't dude. That's do it. so awesome, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's it's bittersweet, but he he was like so looking forward to coming down for the special tape, and he passed away very fast, like three months. He was perfectly healthy last July, and then he passed away like the like the Tuesday or the Monday after Thanksgiving. It happened so fast. So the fact that he wasn't going to make it down there, I was like, I just felt obligated to, I scrapped the important message of the special that I really wanted to emphasize with the whole 30% thing. Mm-hmm. And there was a, one of my favorite bits I've ever written was involved in that. But I felt it was more important to kind of show gratitude and dedicate something to him. So we changed the name of it. We changed like the set decoration and all that kind of stuff, which I won't spoil it because it gets addressed at the end of the special and everything. Wow, dude. So then the name of the title became... What, just more of, like, whose call was that then? Uh, mine. Uh, and, you know, uh, Eric Griffin directed it, so he was, yeah. like, very surprised, like, a week before the taping. He's like, you want, you want to change everything? And I was like, well, at least... Let me get this straight. Le- <laughs> Can you change the title? Just your name? But you know what? He, lo- <laughs> okay. he ended up loving it, though, because you know Eric's a big softy. Of course. He really is. He really is. And he's he's never afraid to tell you how it is. He yep. was like, is this a ballsy move to scrap everything a, ball- a week beforehand? But he was like, you know, if, if you feel like that's the right thing, I support it and let's cool. make it the best. And cool. it is something I'm like genuinely proud of now. 